app storage is great for storing simple values like integers and booleans. But when it comes to complex data, like custom Swift types, for example, we've got to do a little bit more work. This is where we've got to try and poke around directly with user defaults, rather than relying on the app storage property wrapper. For example, we could make a simple user struct to work with. I'll say struct user has a first name, string, and a last name, string, like so. This has just two strings, but they aren't special. They're just pieces of text. The same goes for integers, numbers, booleans, true or false, doubles, numbers with a dot inside, whatever. Even arrays and dictionaries of these simple types work great. Just a string, then another string, then a third string, and da da da. The simple. When working with data like this, Swift gives us a fantastic protocol called Codable, which is responsible for archiving and unarchiving data. It's a fancy way of saying converting objects like this one into plain text and back again. Now we're looking at Codable much more in future projects, but for now, we'll keep it as simple as possible. Our goal is to archive a custom type so we can store it in user defaults, then unarchive it when it comes back out of user defaults. When working with types that have simple values like strings, booleans, integers, arrays are the same and similar, the only thing we have to do is add a conformance to this struct for Codable. That's it. With that one tiny change, Swift will automatically generate code for us that will archive and unarchive user instances for us as needed. We still have to say when to do it and what to do with the data, but Swift takes care of the bigger process behind the scenes for us. Now this part of the process is taken care of by a new type called JSON encoder. Its job is to take something that conforms to codable like user here and send back that object as JavaScript object notation, JSON, J-S-O-N. I know the name implies it's just for JavaScript. It was invented there, but in practice it's so good it's used absolutely everywhere in many, many languages now. Now this codable protocol does not require that we use JSON. And in fact, we don't actually care. There are other formats available. By far though, JSON is the most common. Here again, we don't actually care what's being used. As long as it can be stored inside user defaults, we're happy. Anyway, to convert our user instance to JSON data, we make a JSON encoder, call encode in it, and then handle any errors appropriately. Perhaps you can try or try question mark, whatever. For example, let's make an instance of our user type in this content view struct. I'm gonna say at state private var user is a new user with the first name Taylor and the last name Swift. And now inside our view body down here, we can make a button that archives user and saves it to user defaults. So I'll say button save user with the action of make a new JSON encoder like this, and then do if let data is try question mark encoder dot encode our user. So we can successfully convert this to JSON. Then we'll do user defaults dot standard dot set that data for the key user data. And this is reading user defaults directly rather than going through app storage here because the app storage property wrapper just doesn't work very well here. Now this data value is a new type behind the scenes called confusingly data with a capital D. If you look at it in, in co-completion, you'll see it is uh, data like this, capital D now. It's a type of thing called data. It's designed to store any kind of data you can think about like strings, integers, zip files, images, audio files, whatever. They all can be held by this big binary blob called data. Here though, all we care about is that user defaults knows how to read and write data objects. So we can write that data blob directly into user defaults here. Now, when we're coming the other way around, we have JSON data, I wanna make it back into a Swift codable object, we want to use JSON decoder, not JSON encoder, and then call decode rather than encode. But the process is much the same. That brings us to the end of our project overview. So go ahead and press Command Z a billion times to get back to your starting project, it's time to have a fresh slate to build on for the real project.